So I, I almost had a naked gun moment. Uh, so I was, so I don't control the mic here, right? These guys do. So I was in the restroom. I was like, what if it's on? And like, while Dan is talking, everyone can hear me. Uh, so glad that it happened. You guys didn't hear anything, right? All right, good. Uh, all right, let's start. So who here uh, eats bread? Great, so I'm sure you eat one of our, you are a customer, that's great. Who eats bread by itself, alone? Let's talk, because only ducks eat bread alone. All right, so I, I, will, I promise I will come back to this. Uh, I, I joined, uh, like uh, Danny was saying, uh, Bimbo Bakery's group of Bimbo around two and a half months back, and my team, some of them who are here, will uh, you know, attest to that, that it's, I, I think I use this the most often now after I heard this thing. Uh, so, and I, and I promise I will come back to, to this, why this is important for us, why it's important for our uh, e-tailers and our customers. So, Grupo Bimbo, uh, Danny sort of uh, told my, uh, so, uh, stole my thunder. Uh, so, has anyone heard, forget our brands, has anyone heard of Grupo Bimbo? Oh, wow, great. So, I hadn't, honestly, uh, when I joined uh, two and a half uh, months uh, back, but I had heard of our iconic brands, right? So, and, and I'm sure when Danny was mentioning the brands, you've heard of our brands as well, and you probably consumed them, uh, which, I, uh, which I got to know when you, with a show of your hands. So, all right, so we are uh, 70 years young. We started out of uh, Mexico, and uh, we are a public company in, in Mexico, and listed in, in, uh, here in the US as uh, ADRs as well. Uh, and we are 15 billion in net sales, and we are now 32 countries. When I joined uh, two and a half months back, we were only 22 countries, so you can see we are expanding pretty fast, uh, both organically and through, uh, through acquisition. Uh, Bimbo Bakery's uh, USA, so here are some of our iconic brands you've, you've heard of, Entenmann, Sara Lee, Arnold, Brownberry, Orreed, and so on. Uh, 11,000 routes, which is big, we do direct store delivery. If you don't know what that is, I didn't know what that was, because uh, in Colgate we do warehousing. Uh, I, I will talk to that also, so 11,000 routes, so we're experts there, a uh, lot of people, and 56 commercial bakeries. Some of our, some of our uh, global uh, markets, uh, where we are, you know, Mexico is big, Spain is big, uh, obviously US uh, and Canada, and, uh, and our, we have a powerful portfolio in our category, number one in commercial uh, breads, number one in white pans and thins, number one in buns and rolls, number one in English muffins, and uh, two in sweet baked goods. Exlorada, I think it's, uh, I should tell everyone what Exlorada is. Uh, it's a very exciting thing what we're doing. It's about product disruption. It's about channel disruption. It's standalone business unit, not only it, uh, on paper, but physically also we are uh, not uh, in the same location. We are located uh, separately in, uh, soon to move, we're building a brand new office in uh, Conshohocken uh, outside Philly. And these are the f uh, five things we're working on. Uh, you know, food service, e-commerce, where you know, I am, disruptive product innovation, warehouse, and corporate strategy. I said I will come back to this. Uh, so only ducks uh, do eat bread alone. So the people who raise their hands, who are, who are they? I just want to see. So you just eat it like that, or? Okay. Good bread, okay, good, all right. So we, we make good bread, all right. <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> All right, so the reason why this is uh, important is because most people you know, eat uh, bread on either with protein, dairy, and different spreads, but getting three, two to three dollar breads in your basket raises the, uh, your basket size to $50, right? So when people are, it, it is on the list, when people go shopping, you know, they do write bread on the list when they're going uh, in brick and mortar and even online. And very different from uh, some of the Colgate categories, they were not destination categories. No one uh, went and bought paste, toothpaste. They went through the shopping and they would add stuff. So again, great for our retailers. When we, when we go and meet with them, we tell them this, listen, you know, we have, it's, it's not expensive, but it's fast moving and, uh, and people need that, replenish. You don't buy, for example, toothpaste every week, right? But you do buy bread every week. So I think this resonates uh, really well. Any uh, retailers in the room or it's just brands? All right, uh, so food CPGs. So, you know, this is the relative size of different CPGs, obviously not an exhaustive list. Uh, and I have some great friends in, in uh, many of these companies uh, as well. So one thing is that I think, uh, you know, having worked in uh, e-commerce, uh, baby and pet, uh, as well as personal beauty care, I think food CPGs are around five to seven years behind, 
right? And, and for, for, for the right reasons, right? Online grocery in the US, uh, this, is, this is what I'm talking about, US, in the US is now becoming big uh, with the Instacarts of the world, Amazon Freshes of the world, and so on, but they are still five to seven years behind. In the UK and France, where click and collect and drive model are big with Tesco and Leclerc and Auchan, uh, so they, they are bigger, but in the U.S. they are still, uh, you know, uh, not there yet, uh, and there, there's good reason for that, like I mentioned. But so many food CPGs, not all, uh, have the frog in the pot mentality. If you know this analogy, you know uh, frogs are cold-blooded. They, when you put them uh, 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 to boil uh, in, in a pot with water, they adjust their body temperatures, right? They adjust, and they don't, they can't jump out at this point, but they don't jump out. They adjust. But when they, the uh, water starts to boil, they've lost all the energy and they can't jump, it's too late. But the good thing is that many are there, but many are still starting to swim around as the water warms. That means they're trying to do something. We are doing something. Uh, that's why we have Accelerata and I'm sure many, how many food CPGs over here? Great, so uh, you know, as you can, how many uh, non-food CPGs, personal beauty? So, uh, you know, the, the great thing is, you know, I see, uh, I think, more hands in the food CPG, so you, got, you guys are here, so you are deploying Clavis, you are thinking about it, you are getting the fundamentals right. So again, uh, uh, one of the things, we did a study, and we found out that why people, uh, online grocery is not as big. Uh, so this was a customized study with it, and uh, the four or five key points came out, uh, shipping integrity concerns. When you ship some, something to someone's home, People aren't sure if it will be, it will retain its integrity. Will the bread, for example, be squished, uh, and so on? Freshness. Uh, when I go buy bread uh, in the brick and mortar, I, you know, you, everyone sees the, you know, when is the expiry date? When you're buying produce, you're seeing, you know, how does it look, and so on. So freshness uh, matters as well. Uh, uh, they can inspect, uh, so they, you know, people want to see, you know, the different what they're buying, especially for food, and so on. And it's uh, the last one. They say it's unhygienic and handled by many people. So around five, six years ago, I was, was with uh, Peapod uh, on a store, on a warehouse uh, visit, and they said, you know, uh, you know, people think that, you know, what, when we are shipping at the back of the ware rooms and shipping them, it's touched by too many people. But the truth is that when you go to a store, you know, when you and I go to a store, we smell stuff, we touch. You know, so many people come, right? So actually, online, it's uh, handled by less people as the perception uh, is that it's handled by more people, but it's less pe uh, people. So again, I think we need to, you guys need to, in the food CP, you need to educate your consumer that, listen, this is, uh, and obviously if there's an issue, for example, your uh, packaging and so on, but we need to also educate the consumer why online uh, makes sense, why it is not what they think they are, why the perception might be wrong. So uh, on online grocery, you know, there, it's, it's, it's more challenging, right? The last mile, it's mostly click and collect, where, you know, where everything's very local, the assortment is local, the availability of the stock is local, and so on. It can be, typically, food items can be thrown in a box and shipped across the market. I mean, yeah, the cereals and uh, stuff can, but uh, longer or shorter sh uh, shelf life items cannot really be thrown in a box and shipped across. Uh, so that's why it's very local. Uh, and, uh, and so we have to manage that. It's, it's, it's not easy to manage that, and hence I'm talking about you know, localization and what, how we are using Clavis and how we plan to use Clavis. Uh, with one disclaimer, so we went live with Clavis uh, around only three, four weeks back, right? So we are still learning, uh, as, as we, but we have plans, uh, and we've already started seeing the advantage of how location-based analytics uh, are, are uh, working for us. Uh, so uh, everyone has seen probably the e-commerce flywheel. You know, you have selection, you have price, you have content, search, and traffic. Uh, I'm primarily going to focus on the selection part, the assortment and availability, and then touch on uh, lo location-based uh, promotions. I think Clavis's tool, we have three main uh, KPIs for uh, location. It's uh, av assortment, availability, price, and pr promotions. So that's where I'm going to uh, mostly focus on. So on selection, so for us, you know, assortment is important, right? Uh, because we have a lot of regional brands, for example, Arnold, Orweed, and Brownberry, pr primarily the same product, but it's in the Northeast, you, you've heard, uh, we have Arnold, in other markets we have Orweed and Brownberry. Uh, so if, if you are consuming one in, uh, and we have the same SKU number, right? Same UPC, so that makes it challenging. So we need to manage that very locally. Secondly, we have, we have identified priority SKUs, 
where we need to get that right, right? We, have, we are investing behind them. We have the uh, rich content uh, on, on all the priority SKUs, and they have to be there. The availability of these priority SKUs has to be there. So, uh, so if you haven't done that, you, you know, because we have you know, thousands of SKUs, but we need to prioritize and focus on that. I think that's one of the things that we are tracking using uh, Clavis. And thirdly, premium portfolio. Many people think that you know, uh, online everything is cheap, and yes, many things are. Uh, promotions are used indiscriminately by, uh, by retailers and by brands as well, but I think premium is important. Identify what your premium uh, SKUs are and invest behind them, right? Because you get the best margins, the retailers get the best margins on those. Also, second point, availability. So the fill rate, right? So one of our key KPIs is we need to be there. We need to, all these priority SKUs have to be 99% at least available. Uh, we want to be the trusted uh, brand. We want to have trusted SKUs. How many of you work with Amazon or Amazon Fresh? How, they send us a weekly report. If the fill or in-stock rates are low, we're getting a call, right? Uh, my Amazon uh, person, she's getting calls, right? I'm on, on those emails. So we want to make sure, and for the right reasons, right? And I will talk about the death, uh, the out-of-stock death spiral as well, but fill rate is key. We have to be there, and that's why, you know, Clavis's location base is, without that, it, 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 it was not easy to track these. Secondly, shelf space. Uh, in, in the click and collect model, a lot of the uh, inventory is in the back wear rooms, and those are small. You know, people's, uh, you know, rooms, those are small. So it's not always being picked from, from the uh, front-facing store, but it's in the back room. So we really, really need to manage that in real time. And thirdly, about DSD, that's direct store delivery. Uh, who knows what direct store delivery is? Okay, great, I didn't know that you know, around two, two months back. So direct, it's challenging, right? It's not like we, we produce something and ship it to the where, uh, uh, through the DC of Walmart or Amazon. It basically is going to, uh, we bake it, we make it, goes to our depot, and then directly to the store. So we manage that, we own that. If it's, if it's uh, out of stock in the stores, it's not the uh, retailer, it's we are managing that, we, are, we own that in, in most cases. So before life, before Clavis, uh, was something similar to this. Uh, you know, uh, we had, uh, I mean, there was a lot of data available. We were not getting it, and it was very manual intensive. It was not easy, right? Uh, again, three weeks in Clavis, so again, we, we're still learning. We're still doing a lot of things uh, which we were not able to do before. So one of the things we're tracking is, on, we are tracking around 500 locations, right, of these four uh, e-tailers. Uh, Walmart being uh, one, uh, the biggest one over there. So, and we are going to add more. Uh, what, what you could do is you could have uh, maybe some uh, some e uh, locations which represent represent maybe uh, the whole stock uh, or or significant portions of that. But we are tracking around 500. We are going to add more. Uh, well, let's talk about Walmart grocery. So, you know, one is about availability and distribution. Distribution is where, you know, what are the SKUs are available across the Walmart universe, and the availability is our priority SKUs that we want to track. We want to know what we're doing with them, what their availability is. So without, you know, Clavis, we didn't have this information. Literally, someone uh, had to go manually, the Walmart account manager, and if you think about 500 stores and Walmart, online grocery might be in 500 to 1,000 stores now, but they are going to go get into all of their locations. Those are like close to five thousand locations. So no one can, one person, you need an army of people without Clavis to go and do that. Uh, on the, uh, what's available? Availability, like I mentioned about Arnold, uh, Orweed, and Brownberry. So here is, you know, it's telling us, you know, number of locations available, you know, where this SKU is. Like I said, so uh, it doesn't have to be in all the locations because we have a regional, uh, Arnold is not uh, available across the U.S., it's only in the Northeast. So again, this gives us a snapshot in real time, I mean, however, you know, it's tracked 24 hours and so on, but, you know, relatively real time on figuring out what our uh, availability is. On out of stocks, for example, we knew that Entenmann's Little Bites uh, was having some manufacturing uh, production issues, uh, some shortages. You know, we had, uh, you know, the horrendous uh, thing in uh, Houston, and, you know, we have some uh, commercial bakeries around the area, so obviously things were affected, but we needed to uh, because Entenmann's does really well online. It's one of our priority SKUs, but without this, without having this information real time, we would be more in a reactive stage. 
uh, we'll be getting calls, and we were getting calls from you know the Amazons and and PayPal's of the world to figure out you know why is this not available, why is this out of stock. So this way we could you know manage it, we we know and and track it. So that's important. And I will talk about our some of the key KPIs that we are uh, working on. Uh, on the priority SKUs again, um, you know this is where the uh, if you look at the Walmart stores, we have you know I've just shown you four stores what the availability of our priority SKUs is. Obviously, uh, you know, our goal is, uh, is much higher, but without this information available uh, like this, we would not be able to uh, track it, or we would be, but it would be, take a much uh, longer time. Uh, so if you just uh, zone in on one store, uh, you know, the, the Walmart store in uh, Ohio, here we can tell you know, what is the availability, what are also stocks, and why some of the SKUs are, are void or not available. So the key KPIs we are following, uh, is and we are just implementing these that our percentage of our priority assortment available by store has to be more than 95%. You know, because if we, uh, these are the priority stores, right? If, excuse, if they are not there, if they are not available, you know, it goes into the whole, uh, you know, people can buy it, the search ranking goes down, the whole out of stock uh, 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 depth spiral. The second important KPI is, uh, KPI is that our Whatever our offline in uh, offline in stock benchmark is, and you know you might have different uh, within your brands, it, our online has to be more than that, right? What that means if we have nine, we'll say ninety five percent of our we'll have offline in, brick and mortar store in stock availability, online has to be more than that because it's just much more uh, the the detrimental effects of not being online are much more. Because you know, if you, someone can find it, they cannot click on it. If they cannot click on it, they cannot. Uh, obviously, the sales ranking goes down. And for example, um, you know, back in my days at Colgate, if you search, even today, if you go to uh, Amazon.com and search for toothpaste, you get 46,000 results. No one is going below the fold. And if, if from the smaller screen, people are. You have to be in the top five, top three, because no one is going to go and scroll down and see. Unless you know if you're looking for that long tail or for that special flavor and so on, but we have to be above the fold. That's usually 20 uh, search results. Uh, so this is uh, the assortment challenge. What we were planning to do. So I mentioned about uh, the wear rooms. So it's extremely limited square footage in uh, Peapod wear rooms, driving high out of stocks due to limited shelf space for both fast and slow moving perishable bread skews. Like uh, on the uh, on the left over here is where our products are stored for the Peapod click and collect model. It's limited space, it's tight, so we really need to manage uh, this, uh, this well, working with, uh, with, with Peapod. For here, you know, if it's not, like talk about the debt spiral, the out of stocks uh, result in lost sales, our search ranking goes down. When search ranking goes down, your findability is affected, which uh, results in less number of clicks and which results again in search ranking goes down and lost sales. Again, so this is something we really need to uh, manage well. Uh, and as, as, as said before, it's much more uh, important in the online world as opposed to the offline world. So what, what we are planning to do, uh, so this is more forward looking uh, just because you know, we, we are on this journey very uh, uh, only in three weeks into it. So we want to leverage Clavis to gain real time visibility of out of stocks. That's the beauty, right? We can do real time. Uh, and implement a priority pick plan where all uh, Bimbo bakeries, uh, depot, and routes will have, okay, we need to supply e-commerce first. So number two, we want to cor correlate Clavis data with search ranking, sales data, and uh, customer feedback uh, to see overall performance. I think that's key. Uh, if you haven't uh, talked with your Clavis consultant, do talk to them about correlation between all of these things. There are a lot of different things which are pulling here, you know, our search ranking, all the six Ps we mentioned, but what exactly effect is there? You know, if you, are in if you are in stock, if your search ranking is high, if you have the right content, you know, how do you correlate all of that in, in that dashboard? Uh, a lot of things might not be available in, our, in, in the uh, out-of-the-box uh, dashboard, but I know uh, in, the pre in my previous life, we were downloading a lot of uh, Excel spreadsheets and customizing what we wanted to see. Again, we need to do this correlation, right? Why this is important. And lastly, we want to re-evaluate our product mix in partnership with our, uh, our whole team. Uh, because, so, so my team, you know, uh, Peapod is, is uh, in, in our e-commerce team, 
and the Ahold, the brick and mortar is a separate team. Same thing with walmart.com is, is our, uh, our e-commerce team and the Walmart uh, brick and mortar is a separate team. So we need to work with them, right? Especially in this uh, brick and mortar.com model, we need to understand the SKU rationalization, the, the wear room shelf space adjustment, maybe something is in, in front of the store, but maybe it's not selling, it's not moving, move it to the back of the store. So I think all of those things uh, we need to understand. We can do it more easily because we own the most of them. We are scan-based trading model, so we own how we manage the shelf, and, and we but really need to understand and work in, in uh, partnership with our uh, offline teams. Uh, lastly, I'm going to talk about uh, you know uh, the traffic uh, fly, flywheel here on the promotions. Uh, promotions may vary by region, by store, by retailer. You know, promotions are also being used uh, indiscriminately uh, by 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 a lot of us, by our retailers, our brands, uh, and there's always something going on, right? But without a lot of uh, strategy or thinking behind that. Uh, we are guilty of it. Uh, I think many of, of uh, us are guilty of that here as well. Uh, so we need to understand, for example, here on Walmart, these were some of our, on the left, some of our uh, SKUs and uh, how we were promoting them. You know, some were 17% off, some 1.5% off, some were the no prom promotions going on. But we really need to, if you, sorry, if you look here, uh, just dig in more detail, you can see when it was on rollback at Walmart uh, on, the, on the line below. And then uh, you know what the rollback was uh, in this product detail page, which we can access through through Clavis. Uh, so, but I think what I want to say over here is, what is the goal of your promotion? Uh, we just came up with a customer strategy, and uh, we had two big buckets. One was, uh, what is our what is our strategy on promotions overall to drive traffic or to generate conversion? Those were two big buckets. You know, why are we doing that? Uh, what is the impact? Uh, you know, increase in the selling price is the fastest way to grow your top line, right? And a decrease in through promotions and so on is is can have a direct effect on the top line and also on the bottom line. Uh, the category index, meaning w within your category, how are you how are your promotions indexed? Are you over indexed? Are you under indexed? So it's important to understand that uh, to understand uh, the, what your competitors are doing, to understand what overall category is doing and what is their strategy, to understand their strategy. Uh, one of the things is with, with uh, what we, we want to do is we're seeing, okay, what are, how are competitors doing and at the same time, in real time, change, working with our retailers, uh, advise them to change their strategy and promotions. Uh, two main KPIs that we are following is the percentage of our SKUs on promotion in the top 20 search results equals to what our offline uh, promotions are. For example, if we have, uh, so this is our index, you know, what our offline uh, promotions are, you know, what are we doing online in our top 20 uh, search results. Secondly, percentage, percentage of our SKUs on promotion versus category and versus competitors. This is a, this we have to understand uh, if we are always on promotion, you know, are, are we losing? Is there leakage happening on sales, on revenue? So these are the two KPIs that we, we are implementing to understand uh, how our promotion strategy is and if it's working with uh, our